Okay, Stephen, this is going to be the second half of your video analysis from the back side. And here I want you to see this back leg action from a different vantage point. So this is where you're going to get to see kind of what this sinking on your back leg is doing at the end of your motion. And this is the video that I'm kind of used to seeing of you. So this is what I always thought was you kind of rushing towards the plate where it looked like you were like collapsing on your backside because your hip was going out too soon. But it's really that you're just sitting straight down if you look at it from the side. That's why I wanted the side video to kind of confirm what was going on. So, okay, let's go forward here. You're going to see that, you know, at leg lift, we're, we're about the same right here, okay? Everything's gotten back. Weight's gotten back. We know from the, back, from the side view that your leg doesn't come back far enough when you lift it. that It just kind of goes straight up and down. So we'll, we'll, I'll show you kind of how to lift that differently so that you can um, get your hip kind of closed off a little bit more. The problem here uh, comes in the next few frames. So remember on the side view where you're sinking down on the back leg, well here's what happens. It looks like you bend your back leg too early from this vantage point. So you've gotten to the peak leg lift, now you're starting to get ready to go, your hands are still up high, and you're kind of sitting straight down. So you'll see kind of, you'll get here, sink down. This is what I'm used to seeing right here. Get here, sink straight down on your back leg. What's supposed to happen is you're kind of starting to, you're supposed to be drifting your weight kind of forward at these next few frames. Notice how Noah's not going to uh, bend his leg until much later than you. All right. So let's go right here, here. You're getting to peak leg lift. Watch the back leg change right here, and you're going to go straight down. Whereas Noah's going to get all the way up, bring his leg down a little bit, and then he's going to start engaging. From the side view, you're going to see Noah starting to drift down the mound right here. His hip's starting to lead out. He's kind of falling a little bit. Then he's going to drive. All right? That will happen automatically when you change the way you lift your leg, and we start talking about what to do with this back leg differently. Okay? Now, because you sit like that, as you move forward, this is where it throws you off into rotation. So you've sat on your back leg. Your hands are out too late. Your back arm is out too late relative to your front leg. See how your front leg gets all the way down and you haven't even separated yet? We do want to be late with our hands, but you have a timing error between your lead arm and your lead leg that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Notice how Noah's going to come down, get out of the glove, and now his lead arm and lead leg are going out together. Okay? You are going to come down, hold on to your hands a little too long, and then everything's got to catch up. All right? So now, as you go forward, the back leg has been set on. All right? Everything is, one sec, let me adjust you. <clears throat> back leg's been set on. You've squatted all your weight straight down. Now you've got to get out of it because you've got to drive towards the plate. And that's that jump that you have at the end of your motion. So right here, watch the back leg. It's basically just going to extend straight out, straight out because you're trying to jump forward. That's where you're trying to generate all the velocity that you lost in the beginning of your motion. All right, now... When you do that, watch the side of your foot here. You're going to basically sit down, jump straight out to the side. Your heel's coming off the ground a little bit, but you're not quite doing this action correctly. All right? And then let me explain. We want to drive off of this back leg in order to push our back hip forward and assist us in getting hip shoulder separation so that when we land on our front leg, our hips are going first and then our upper body is coming after. So this back leg is the final or the, the initiation into rotation. We want to be pushing and extending on our back leg, but at the same time we're coming onto our big toe on the back foot, and it's diving our back hip forward automatically. What you're doing is you're jumping straight out sideways, so you're not actually getting your foot to turn over enough, and your hips are not actually turning forward. See your hips right here. They're not diving forward enough. And the way you can tell is look how straight your back leg is getting and see how sideways your foot still is. Now watch Noah here. All right, it's a different action. He's going to be flexed on his leg. All right, he's driving, driving, driving. He's going to extend just like you. But you're going to notice that his back leg doesn't get all the way straight. It gets really close. And then right before it gets straight, you're going to see it kind of dive in. See the knee kind of go in, the hip kind of goes in, and the foot opens as a result. Look how much more his heel is off the ground at the same point in time. Right here is the same point in time between you two. So look how much further his heel is off the ground than yours. Look how much more his hips are starting to turn than yours. 
this is what I mean by you should be throwing much harder with a lot less stress on the arm. Okay? Notice right here, so you're at the same point in time, look how you're going to have to kind of awkwardly get this arm into position. So you've extended off that leg, your front arm's kind of coming around you to the front, it's kind of diving out a little bit. You can see it over here, kind of getting out of the way a little bit because you have to do that in order to get your arm in the right spot. And then you're going to kind of just get caught here into maximum external rotation and your toe is going to drag in an S. You ever notice how your toe is going to drag this way and then recorrect and start dragging that way? That is a good indication of really bad timing on your hips. So see how your foot's kind of off the ground there and it kind of fishtails behind you and then it's going to straighten back out? That means that your hips didn't rotate on time. They should be more straight to the plate. Your drag line should be a little bit more straight to the plate and then go out Basically, it goes like this. It goes straight to the plate, and then it goes off to the side. That's essentially what a drag line should do. Anytime it's fishtailing like that, we know we've rotated our hips wrong. We haven't done it on time. So the side view is the main indicator. You're just sitting straight down on that leg, and I'm going to teach you what that move is supposed to be like. You're going to be, man, you're going to be so much faster laterally to the plate than you're used to. So you'll feel out of control a little bit, and then you'll get the hang of it. But then... From the back side, you'll see how this is setting you in a bad position into rotation. All right, so right there, extend straight out, bad landing position, late hip rotation, and now it's just me making up the difference in my arm. All right, so if 92 is your cap, okay, like you've gotten up to 92, and I don't know what you sit, usually 89, 91, or something like that, and then you said, you know, you dropped off of velocity uh, towards the end. But if 92 is your ceiling so far, I'm saying that when you fix this and you move faster, 92 should be the norm. 92 should be regular. And if you're left-handed in your 92 regular, then you got a, a better shot this next season. And so that needs to be your first priority, man. So that's it. I'm going to send you some instructional video on how to start changing this stuff, and then we'll kind of go from there.